tuned for The Joan Quinn Profiles. As an editor for Andy Warhol's interview, the Los Angeles Herald Examiner, LA Style, and Detour Magazines, Joan covered the social set, the Hollywood hotshots, the international art scene, the mysteries of food, the excitement of travel, and the fabulous world of fashion. Joan continues to find creative people on the cutting edge who make things happen. Here's Joan Agajanian Quinn. Hi, I'm Joan Quinn, and welcome to the Joan Quinn Profiles. Our guests are Beth Bockenheimer and Beverly Sanders. Artist Beth Bockenheimer is a native Angelino who went to Rolling Hills High School, earned a Bachelor of Fine Arts from Cal State, Cal Institute of the Arts, and a Master of Fine Arts from Vermont College. I guess you always wanted to be an artist, Beth. You bet I did. I grew up with it. I'd been, I was on La Cienega when I was like five or six already going to the openings. Is that, well, what influenced you to do that? Oh, my mother was, um, was an artist and um, she didn't really uh, go professional with it, but she grew up with Howard oh. Warsaw. Oh, Howard Warsaw, so, yeah. So, um, she did that and she had gone to the Jepson Institute. Oh, very good. And she had gone, um, I think, to Art Center for technical drawing. Oh, so she really w had a background, an art background. She just never pursued it any further. Did she use it in, in her job in any way? She never worked. That's uh, fine. Yeah. Um, my father always wanted her to make money by putting them in banks. <laughs> uh, but she did get in a show. She couldn't even get in. A sh she couldn't even get in a show at LACMA, from the rental gallery, because Laurel Fidelson had told her, "Your work wasn't consistent." We're getting back to all these old names, actually, which are were important names: Fidelson, Jepson Art School, and Howard Warshaw. And what was your mother's name? Bobby Bockenheimer. We're going to throw her name in here too. <laughs> um, you went to a lot of schools. You went to school in Europe. You went, um, didn't you go to, uh, in Italy? No, I went oh, to Mexico. Mexico. Sorry. It's okay. Why'd you go there? Guadalajara. Why did I go there? Oh, well, when I was that age, I um, wasn't allowed to move out of the house, so I moved out of the country. Oh, I see. Well, you went... <laughs> What what did you choose in these schools? Because you went to, to Cal Arts. Mm -hmm. Why did you go there? I was at Chenard first of all, mm. and I made a decision to try Cal Arts because there was a whole new way of thinking, and I wanted to see if that would work with me. Did Chenard die before? No, it or was, was still living. It was still living until I graduated. So oh, and then and then you went to Cal Arts after that. No, what happened was I. Uh, two years before, we had a choice: either we could stay at Chenard oh, or go to Cal Arts. I see. And while I was at Cal Arts, I was in the feminist program. Oh, you, okay. And I got a scholarship. So. And then you also did Otis Otis uh, Parsons. Right, I did drawing classes there. I hadn't gone to school in a long time, and I really wanted to go back into drawing. So each school that you chose had a certain reason for your being there. Right, well, and you know, it wasn't for me to do a, a degree at Otis. It was for me to, That's to, right. to actually just get information. So when you, you just mentioned feminist studies, you, you worked with Judy Chicago, but was she also at CalArts at the time? Well, when I first started at CalArts, she was in Fresno. Oh. And so my first introduction to Judy was in Fresno. I had gone there. Um, with Miriam Shapiro and some of the other women that were at Cal Arts, and we experienced the whole program up there. With her? With her. And she had already started as far as uh, being a spokeswoman or showing her art and having the feminine, feminism bent. Yes, she did. She had was, she already started the dinner party at that time? No, dinner party was, I think, oh, probably seven years later. And then did you work on that? No. Oh, you didn't work on that. What what motivated you then to be with her in Fresno and learn that process? Because it was with before the feminist movement at uh, feminist program at Cal Arts, and I was working with Miriam Shapiro as my mentor, uh. and so um, 
they were enticing me to stay on another year and work in the feminist program. And what, and what was your involvement in that? What did you bring to that program? Um, I brought all the knowledge I had up to that time, which wasn't very much. <laughs> uh, but I, I knew about shopping, so I did a shoe closet. Oh, that's when you started. So that was your, your um, statement on that, feminism. Right. Well, tell us the process of that. Tell us how that got started. Um, we had a lot of consciousness raising groups. And also, um, in this program, it was 23 women um, from all areas of, uh, of L uh, not L.A., but of the United States. And Miriam Shapiro and Judy Chicago were working together at that time. Mm. And we had the fortune to have an abandoned house, and which is called Woman House, if people know about that, because it's a long time ago. Right. Okay, so I went into a room and I said, wow, this would make a great closet for shoes. I mean, it was just like automatic. The whole room. No, it was just, at that time, it was a closet, <laughs> and I had to put shelves in, and I repainted it. And I also did the laundry room. So I had nylons and I had styrofoam studs for the laundry room. And things that pertain to shoes. Right. Obviously. Mm -hmm. And that's been your, your signature, let's say. Yes, pretty much so. Tell us why it, it came to be shoes. You want to put your shoes up here on the table? No. <laughs> yeah, they're probably more comfortable. <laughs> um, I always had uh, problematic feet. Oh, really did? You're not a Pisces? What is that going to do with Because Pisces have to do with feet. That's one of the things that they have. Um, really? Yeah, what? prominent in their psyche. That's what my mother had. Okay, there you go. Okay, okay go on. And um, so I always had to go to Westwood Bootery and have things made, shoes made for me. My father always had shoes made. My, uh -huh. my first, in, uh, I think one of the other influences of my grandmother, she was in the schmuck industry. And she always had shoes made. So uh, this is something you've grown up with. I've often. grown up with. I mean, she had one closet with nothing but black shoes. <laughs> <laughs> so. Um, so these shoes were black shoes to begin with. Oh yeah. Tell us about this. Well, the piece is called "Do Me, Do Me, Do Me," and um, I was thinking of, I've never done anything about I music. Don't or anything to do with the industry. And I, I'm a native of Cal Southern California. And um, I thought of Tina Turner at one time. Uh. But what happened was, right near where I live, there happens to be a thrift shop, and I happened to walk down the street, and the black shoes were in the window. Um, also, uh, I wanted to do something with music. And so I had made some notes. They're kind of ambivalent. And um, I put a, over a thousand rhinestones on those pieces. So from these shoes, you did these other shoes beside, be, next to you. Yeah. And what are those called? Oh, my garden, in my garden. You can't even see the shoes. Are they shoes or are they boots? They're shoes, Gallo boots. Oh, they're, oh. I got a garage sale. They're the over the knee boots. I mean, like if so I So they go all the way up. Can you show just where the boot goes? Here. Oh, it goes all the way up to there. I see. You know where they flop over and here if you want. The shoe, the shoe part is. I'm not doing this very well. No, just, just point to the shoe. Yeah, the shoe okay. part is there, right. And these are all silk flowers, which I um, put into the shoe. And those sho these, these two shoes have been exhibited in museums all over. You, you've had your work in many, many museums. What's the knack of getting your work into a museum? Especially something like this. It's a sculpture, mm -hmm. but it does have a, a different feel to it than mm -hmm. a painting, right? which you do also. Mm -hmm. um. I wouldn't say there's a formula for it. There's no formula. There's never a formula. No, I mean, I you know, it's like um, uh, the show at, at MOCA, Division of Labor, had to do with being in the show at the Bronx, uh, in the Bronx Museum. Yeah, because you've been all over the country. Right. And um, what's happened is sometimes I meet somebody else and they said, oh, we're having a show and would you like to participate? 
or I've sent slides places. Um, cold calling is another way of putting it. And people call me back. Do you write about shoes? Do I write about shoes? I have a little notebook, but I don't write about them. I might draw them. I see. I'm trying to do an installation with them. One thing you do is you make masks as well, and your mask is on the set. Yes. And it looks like you uh, use the same technique as these, this rhinestone with that. What? How did that mask start? Did uh, you form it? Yes, it's my face. Ah. And I was working in South Central at the time. I'd worked there for 10 years in continuation high schools. Mm. Um, and I saw situations that I, I've never seen before. I'd been there when the first civil unrest happened in the 60s. Um, and I've driven through there a couple times, but I've really not been there. And as an, a teacher, I was usually the Caucasian on campus, and I saw how um, there was no hope in some of these people. And then there was hope in a lot of other people, but there was like, it seemed like they were going against a, a dark wall, or they didn't even care because they didn't think they were gonna get, get out. And so that, cre that was your influence for doing this mask? That was part of it, and it had to do with the civil unrest. About, uh, you have a lot of multiculturalism, I think. It feels like mm -hmm. influenced in your work. Mm -hmm. Do you teach a mask making class? Not right now. But have you? Oh yeah, I've taught workshops, I've taught at museums, I've had grants for it. And one of the things, just before we leave, is you write grants, don't yes. you? Yes. What's, there has to be a knack for writing grants too. I think I lost it in the last few years because I really would like to have one. Uh huh. I don't do you help other people write grants? No. Oh, actually, yes, I do, because I was at, um, what's his name? Oh, it's a, I can't even remember his name. He'll kill me. Um, <coughs> it's on, in Bergamont Station. Um, I was asked to show people how to write grants. See, that's what I would think, because you, you, there's a technique to writing them. You have to know how to call, the th call those, um, call and focus what's wanted on that paper. And so, obviously, you know how to do it. Right, and the man's name was Eton Bortz. Or Eton, they... he's great. He, we would both be mad if you didn't mention him. Eton, keep watching. <laughs> <laughs> Beth, thank you for being with us oh, today. you're quite welcome. And don't go away, we'll be right back with Beverly Sanders. Hi, I'm Joan Quinn, and we're back with actress, director, Beverly Sanders. You've seen her face on numerous TV shows and commercials, in several movies, on the stage, <laughs> and if you're on the UCLA campus, you might run into her, because that's where she teaches a course in acting. Beverly is a true uh, Hollywood um, played such a big role in your life. You went to uh, Hollywood High and you were born, I was born in Hollywood. and raised here, yes. <laughs> and you went to UCLA. Uh -huh. So how did that raise, uh, well, raise it, such it, a consciousness? I wasn't really aware of it until um, my very first series. I, I had done um, Rhoda. I had done, no, I hadn't done Rhoda yet. I had done the Mary Tyler Moore show. And then oh. Bill Persky, Carl Reiner, and Sammy Denoff saw me. And I did, um, Dom DeLuise's show called Lots of Luck. Uh, I, and so so I you were really Dom's. their type of people, the Denoff, uh, Persky oh, yeah. group. You well, were for this particular for show, it was uh, Kathleen Freeman, me, Dom, and um, Wynne Irwin. And we, um, it was about, it was an English show that was brought, that they um, Americanized, just uh -huh. like All in the Family. Uh -huh. And so um, I did that show and um, uh, when we do, they, they have a week just before you go on the air where you talk to all the advertisers and everybody and it's a very big thing at Century Plaza, I think that's where we were. And everybody kept saying, where, where are you from? And I kept saying, I was born in Hollywood, <laughs> California. And they said, no, 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 but 
we know you live here, but where were you from? Like f from yeah, some other right. city or a state. Right. And I said, no, this is it. So I really realized, you know, at that point that it was exceptional that I am, you know, the Hollywood prodigy. I am. The I was, product. <laughs> and I was born on Beverly Boulevard, which was also, you know. What hospital was that? It's not there anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even remember it's a, that. It, it, it was a Lutheran hospital. Oh, it was. Which is a nice place for a Jewish girl, I That's think. In the Lutheran hospital yeah. on Beverly Boulevard, yeah. in the middle of all those temples my father there. <laughs> my father told me the story that, um, and I, I'm, I'm, this is, uh, it was a sweet story. You know, he meant it to be sweet, but he said that I was born with prickly heat. And it was all over my body. And I, I guess I wasn't the most attractive baby <laughs> that you've seen. And I was 10 pounds. And he said he looked out the window and saw a Beverly bus going by and said, let's name her Beverly. Is that, is that his story? <laughs> That's his, that was That's his story. That's a great story. <laughs> Very good. So, now you didn't have the hospital, but we still have right. Beverly. And that's we have right. Beverly Boulevard. That's right. And Beverly Hills and everything. And it's you still know, so. very California, isn't it? Oh, very yeah. Los Angeles. Oh, yeah. So it was your first? It was fascinating. Uh, I did the Carson show once, uh, or uh, quite a few times. But the first time I did it, um, I said to him, because I was just getting ready <laughs> to, I said, I'm getting ready to do my hometown parade. <laughs> and he said, what is that? And I said, the Rose Parade, which I had watched as a child Forever. for years and right. years and years and years. And so it's, it's kind of um, hometown. But yeah, but now it's more, um, I think it's, I, I think well, there are a lot of people that, you know, I keep running into. Uh, and my husband, who surprisingly enough, we both went to Hollywood High and we both <laughs> at the same time, not at the same time, he's just a little bit younger than me, but just <laughs> that I much. I say a little bit older. <laughs> is no. he in the show business world? He's a musician. Oh, so he is. Yes. So. Well, it's not, I don't know, do musicians think, are different. Do you think Hollywood High nurtured a lot of actresses? Well, I never when I went to Hollywood that. High, um, Ricky Nelson was graduating, Yvette Mimio was there. Oh. I mean, there was a whole group, uh, Stephanie Powell, oh, Powers. Oh, so, so there was. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, we, it was definitely the high, the Hollywood high school. You, you know. um, went to, U to UCLA. Did you take theater arts there? Um, I know. I majored in psychology because my father wanted me to fall back on something. Well, then how <laughs> did you? Did you start doing commercials? I, or? Had always, I had always been in the business. I was a dancer. Oh. That's how I started. Oh. And then I became a singer. And oh. uh, when I was 19, I told my father I wanted to move back to New York and study. I wanted to study with Strasburg, and uh, I wanted uh, to really do that. And But he said, you have to finish school first. And I said, well, can I take my school money, move back there, and I'll go to NYU or something? Uh -huh. He didn't trust me, so he said no. But that was smart. <laughs> but I, I uh, <coughs> found a job singing cross-country with a dance band that ended up in New York City. That's how you went? Mm-hmm. Oh, that was that was even smarter. Yeah, that yeah. was great. He was <coughs> shocked. They, my family's always been quite shocked. It, <laughs> when I want to do something, they now have come to the realization <laughs> that I'll do it. You seem a little pushy in that. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Seems I Seems like am. you're going to make it. That's Did right. you start doing commercials right away? No, or? actually, um, then I, um, in New York, I did theater. And um, I did a lot of summer stock, and, and then I did Abner. I did a bus and truck of Abner, little Abner. And, um, and then I um, put together a nightclub act, and then I did all the Playboy clubs, just See, when they were really hot and happening. So I did nightclubs. I played the Sahara Singing? Hotel. Mm -hmm. What yeah. kind of uh, songs? Just, um, you know, <laughs> mostly a lot of show stuff and did stuff you? like that. Yes, that's really, you know, I, I was a singer dancer. I was doing a lot of that. Were you stock. taking singing here lessons? I, my mother was an opera singer. Oh. My mother's an opera singer. So oh. I kind of studied with her, and then I started taking so lessons you had in it New in York. Your jeans. Mm -hmm. oh. I just kind of sang. Did you do naturally. anything on Broadway? Um, no, nothing on Broadway. But you but did. Off did you Broadway. do musicals? Oh yeah, off Broadway and and theater off Broadway, and I was at the actor studio. And then I did the Playboy circuit. And then um, while I was at the Sahara Hotel in Las Vegas, I had decided that I wanted to do commercials too because oh, all these other started? people. And so when I came back here, I said, I'm going to stay here 
And then I, uh, it took me quite a while to get it commercial. Did it? That was the beginning of maybe celebrities doing commercials? No, actually, when faces? I was coming up through the commercial ranks, um, it was really mostly um, very, um, I'm, I'm considered a character woman. Uh, right. And so, oh, so it, it was like that? Yes, it was. No, it was not <coughs> character. They, were, they didn't do funny commercials. The paper made commercials and all those commercials. They had, well, the perfect people, you know, the, see, the women and the see, men that looked just, you know, beautiful all the time, even if they're from the Midwest. <laughs> you were, you um, took a workshop or you were accepted into the directing AFI. workshop. Yes. I've jumped in your life. That's I've brought okay. you to being a director That's okay. already. That's okay. But we know you were a singer yes. and a dancer. And then I had um, then I had a theater which was I don't know maybe you'd have even had come to it myself and three other two other ladies. We had a theater called Room for Theater which was in the valley. A and you were I um, was one of the, the directors one of the but I was uh, yes, I was the artistic director but I also directed oh, shows. Oh, so you'd started uh -huh. already directing mm -hmm. shows before oh, yeah. you went uh, oh, yes. into before the AFI I got into program, AFI. Which was is a really specialized very, and um, specific. Very it's very difficult to get into. Yes. That's why I wanted to bring it up. Yes, it is. It's <coughs> the really the only women's game in town in terms of having an opportunity to make a film. Did you have so, you made a film I did. and you won an award. <laughs> yes, I, it won the uh, film award in San Francisco for the Women's Film Festival and it won another little award in, not in Sundance, but somewhere. <laughs> not, I can't think of the name of the place now. It's that time. But when you went into that, <laughs> know. you know that time Hello? in your life when, when you, you go, <laughs> oh, what was it? It was a friend of mine. <laughs> when you went into that program, did you have um, favorite directors that you had worked with? Were you? Oh, yes. Were, you yes. I, I'd been really, really very lucky because I worked with, um, I worked with uh, Richard Attenborough uh, I, I, on uh, Magic. I worked with um, Norman Jewison on um. and Justice for All. So I, as an actress, I had, I, you know, I have had really nice, wonderful opportunities, you know. So those directors were in, in your background and, and you were right. thinking about it. You knew about right. it. So did you want to give up acting and just be a director? I did. Oh, I did. did. And I tried for quite a while, but it's very but they, difficult. They like it your face. Difficult. They like to well, see your face all the time. <laughs> You're teaching so a then class. I, yes. Well, I, then I wrote a one person show for myself. Oh, you did? Uh-huh. Because that's going to say, that's going to segue into the one person show that you're directing. Yes. And also a class that you that's teach. That's right. Okay, UCLA, so well, I did this show called Yes, Sir, That's My Baby. And the head of UCLA came to see it with the group of them and said, well, you should teach a one person show class. Uh -huh. And I said, oh, I don't know how to do that. And they said, no, 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 you do, because we just saw you do it. So I put together a curriculum and I started teaching it there. And then the first class I had, um, there was a handful that, of students that wanted to go on and do their shows. And they said, I, so I sent them to other friends of mine and they called and said, why don't you do it? It's like going to a psychiatrist, you know? We've already told you so much about our ourselves. Our story, yes. right, right. That, and you have an idea of where our story should go. Right. So I have a very small class um, that I teach. It's one thing to know that, but it's another thing to be able to pare it down and to right. see it from the outside like you would be seeing. Right. And knowing how it fits on stage. I think one people plays are the best. I yeah. love them. Because They're I wonderful. The creativity of the director is what brings so much to it. Moving those people around. Because you can't just stand there and right. do a one person play. But the most exciting part is the development of a play. So you get it yeah. and we don't get it. Yeah. The audience doesn't just get it. Just developing it at, at the beginning of the workshop, you know. It's so amazing to me because so many people think they've written their one-person shows, and it's not really what they want to say. You find out. You're working on uh, Phyllis Franklin's yes. show. Yes, one-person con show. She's a concert, concert pianist. pianist. Yes. And an actress. Uh-huh. So how, what did you do with her to make her Well, it was interesting because we're 
we, we are <coughs> actually, we go out on interviews together and, and we compete. Oh, you knew for each the, other? Oh, yes. Uh -huh. I'd known her. And when I started work on my show, she had started to work on a show. Uh -huh. And then years later, or two or three years later, I guess it was, she, she um, came into the class and and I just asked her if she was still playing the piano, and she said yes. So she got a little Casio piano, and we started um, working on life events of hers, like how she started, but to music. I asked an impossible task of her, and she came through. I mean, it really was impossible, because she has to, you saw the show. I mean, she has to play and talk and act. <laughs> And, you know, I mean, I could not do it. But, but, but you get your student it. to do it. Well, I got her to do it somehow. But, you know, she had the talent to do it. So Do you do that with your other students? Yeah. Ask them impossible things? Yeah, I do. So it's great because you, <laughs> from your acting ability, know that you can get that out of somebody rather than just a director who's never acted. Right. Right. Well, that's why a lot of directors take acting classes and and oh, stuff like that. At UCLA, I have, it, at least in every core, in every class, uh, uh, two or three directors. Oh, is that yeah. right? They will, because they need to know. And they have to understand the actor. Sure, sure. Oh, that's so great. Yeah. Oh, I'm so glad you were with us today. Oh, I'm so happy you asked me. And, Thank and you we're going to keep much. looking for your face because it was Thank on, you. we'll see re reruns of what? Mary Tyler Moore. Oh, wrote yeah, a, but there's some new things out, you know, some <laughs> like, New things, new commercials and stuff like that. You can, you know, you, I'm there. You're there. I'm just kind of out there. But Mary Teller Moore and Rhoda and Justice for All. I mean, and um, Rhoda mostly. I mean, I'm a big star now to my daughter. I was going to say. Because, you know, Nick at Night. We like Has that. put me right back on the map. And we like having <laughs> you here with us. Thank you. Thanks for being with us today. Thank and you. And we thank Beverly Sanders and we thank Beth Bockenheim for the wonderful art on the set gorgeous? today. And keep writing to us at 777 South Figueroa, 44th floor, Los Angeles 917. And we'll see you next time on the Joan Quinn Profiles.